it's Aaron Kushler here from Eastern Barbell Strength & Co. In today's video, I wanna to touch on a subject that has a lot of people hitting a plateau and they're not sure what's going on. See, most of the time when we hit a plateau with our training and we're not progressing, we sort of fall into the mindset of doing more, 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 which we think is gonna help. But in reality, there's more going on behind the scenes that we don't really uh, know about and we sort of take for granted. So. Throughout the body, there is the nervous system, so the central nervous system, which runs from the brain down through the spinal column. Extending off that is the peripheral nervous system. Now, that's uh, the nervous system that runs all the way and extends out like tree branches and goes to your limbs and further extremities. There's another branch to that which controls a lot of things that we don't consciously do, and that's known as the autonomic nervous system. Breaking off from that, there is two other uh, separate nervous systems in that. So there's the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. So what we're ultimately trying to do is create a balance in our body. So this autonomic nervous system controls everything that is autonomous in our body. So things we don't have to think about, so things like digesting food, blinking our eyes, beating our heart, all the functions of the body that keep you alive when we go about doing training for instance or any stress for that matter we stimulate the sympathetic nervous system the problem lies in overstimulating the sympathetic nervous system and not stimulating the parasympathetic nervous system enough so if we take a look at the board here the sympathetic nervous system is responsible for the fight or flight response so you know think about back in the day when Cavemen were hunting food. This is being chased by a wild animal. It's that instinct to run or to to fight. So that sort of response is tied with the sympathetic nervous system. In today's society, it gets stimulated very, very easily, easily uh, through many lifestyle factors. So these things are sort of attributed to like overeating. So eating way, way too much. It's it's very hard on our digestive system then, and it causes uh, stress, anxiety, poor sleep patterns, over-exercising. So that's the whole thing with trying to do more when in fact it's not actually going to work in our favour. It's not going to do us any favours. And things such as like financial stress. So anxiety, financial stress, uh, you, you know, these are problems that basically, you know, come through our head. We perceive it as a problem and therefore our body responds to it. Uh, as a physiological response. So that also is another big one. Uh, even things like road rage, you know, if, if someone cuts you off and you, you get that sort of anger feeling very, very quickly, it's very easy to, to set that nervous system off and to get it stimulated. So problems, uh, when we, when we over stimulate that nervous system and it starts to work in overdrive all the time, we start to lead towards burnout. So we get excess adrenaline and cortisol. So those two hormones, they are very important in your body. Cortisol is actually the hormone that gets you up in the morning and gives you plenty of energy throughout the day. Adrenaline and cortisol, when they get it, uh, released in excess amounts, then we start to have problems. So it interrupts you know, our sleeping conditions and our concentration as well. So you know, we're looking at here, uh, decreased strength, our body's you know in overdrive and it's, it's it hasn't had a chance to actually recover so you've probably heard that saying before we don't grow when we're in the gym you grow when you're asleep and recovering so if we're not recovering it's kind of not balancing out the equation there uh, poor concentration decreased immunity and chronic fatigue so decreased immunity is another one one of the telltale signs that you might be overstressed is you're starting to get sick quite often and very easily. So if you're someone who is, is nice and fit and healthy and you don't really get sick that often and then you're pushing a little bit harder or you're quite stressed out, there might be some other things going on and then you're finding you're getting quite sick quite often, there could be a chance that your sympathetic nervous system is overstimulated. So what we're trying to create here, if we have a look at the board, is a balance. So we don't want one side, i.e. the sympathetic nervous system, to be overstimulated because when that one gets stimulated, the other is suppressed. They can't work both at the same time. So 
sympathetic nervous system is pushing down because it's overstimulated, the parasympathetic nervous system hasn't had a chance to actually come back online properly. So we want to aim to create this balance. So how do we do that? The flip side of it is we need to stimulate our parasympathetic nervous system. So rest and digest. So think about eating food, recovery, uh, sleeping, all of these things are attributed to stimulating that nervous system. So we're sti it's stimulated by, number one, like eating foods that agree with your body. So if you know certain foods cause upset, best to sort of, you know, cut those out as much as you can. Not always, you know, there's times when you, you go and have things that don't necessarily agree with your body, that's fine. But if you're eating them in excess and you know it's a problem, then you're not doing yourself any favors. So that's a really, really, uh, you know, everyone is different. Uh, so it, it might, what might work for you might not work for someone else. Getting better sleep, that's a pretty obvious one. We need to be getting to bed on a, a routine. So, you know, go to bed at the same time every night, try to get up at the same time every morning so that our body gets back into a routine and, and the hormones are released at, at standard times throughout the day. Meditation is another good one. So when you meditate, you're basically teaching your mind to focus on one thing or to clear your mind. So if you're someone who has really racing thoughts all the time and you, you can never think, uh, you know, on focus on one thing, uh, meditation is a really, really good one to essentially cut out all the noise that's going on in here and all the influences that are happening and just literally uh, focus on one thing and one thing only, which is very, very good for you know, particularly in your career as well, if you need to focus and you've got other influences constantly coming in, it can cause a lot more stress and hence we go back to this side. Stretching is another good one. So, you know, after you've trained, it's very important to take mobility and stretching and flexibility quite seriously because this helps us recover. You've probably heard it time and time again, you know, stretch after you've trained or, you know, recover, mobilize your foam rollers, there's a reason for this, it starts that recovery process straight away, as does eating after training and eating foods that are right for your body. Everything is leading to your body to recover from what you've done to it. And then a properly structured training program. So that's, a, that's another big one, uh, you, particularly with different forms of training that people are engaging in. So, you know, you might be at a commercial gym and, you know, there's, there's lots of different uh, group classes that are happening plus you're trying to do your own workout and you, you enjoy all this stuff and you just want to do more of everything not necessarily the best approach in a properly structured program you're going to have periods where there is rest allocated so it's you know recommended that you have a rest day um, there is also going to be times where you're having a deload week so a deload is basically giving your body time to recover from the stress that you've built up let it catch up and then apply more stress. So it's strategic planning of your training program to get you the best results. So this system helps us release hormones such as growth hormone and testosterone. So, you know, associated with putting on more muscle, getting stronger, increasing your vitality uh, and your energy and drive. So increased strength when we stimulate this nervous system, better recovery and increased immunity. So opposite side of the sympathetic nervous system where it decreases your immunity this bumps it back up so it's going to stop you from getting sick uh, as often and as severely so again just to recap we're trying to look for this this balance here we're, we're often in this scenario up here you know lifestyle factors get in the way and cause us to be quite stressed stimulating the parasympathetic nervous system to balance out the effects of the sympathetic nervous system. Just to add on to that, we also need to try and reduce as much of these as we can. So through planning ahead, we can plan to actually reduce uh, those things and, and mindful thinking as well. So, uh, you know, road rage is another good one. You know, there's, there's really no point getting all frustrated, you know, if someone just cuts in front of you, just let it go because it's not worth you stressing over it, which is going to lead to all these other things. So realistically, you know, we've got to try and get that balance of the two. Once you can hit that balance, you're going to hit a sweet spot with your training and you will find 
you will start progressing again and you'll nine times out of ten break through a plateau. So I hope that really helped. If you liked this video and you want to find more, click on some of the links down below. Make sure you click the like on this video and subscribe to the YouTube channel so you get notifications of new videos and content coming up. Thanks for watching.